Okay, so we are going to talk about hamstrings today, and I, I want to just remind people that the reason that Egoscu is different is that we're looking at the structure of your body and how we can reposition a joint or why a set of muscles might get tight. So when we talk about hamstrings, there's really three reasons that hamstrings can get really tight and two of them are postural and one of them is just lack of taking the muscle through a full range of motion. Um, so we're going to do all three of those things today, but there's a, a couple of postures that cause your hamstrings to get tight just because they're holding you up. So when your pelvis tucks under, so that regular sitting at a computer, that takes the hamstring into a short position and then it makes it really difficult for the hamstring to lengthen when you bend over or do something like that. Another posture that makes the hamstring is if your hips go forward of plumb. So then your hamstrings are essentially holding you there and once again the hamstring then when you're trying to lengthen it has a really hard time doing what it's supposed to do. So that posture is also going to have implications for your upper back and your shoulders. And so often we can do exercises to open your shoulders and that will change what's going on at your hamstring without ever having to stretch or lengthen the hamstring. Really it's about taking the load joints, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles and repositioning them over each other so that there's a balanced tension between the front and the back of your body. So we're going to go after some of that today. And then the third reason that hamstrings get tight is just that they don't actually go through a regular range of motion anymore. Think of if you spend all day sitting and the hamstring is just in this short position where the knee is flexed and it's there and maybe even it's tucked like this, it's extra short. And then you ask it to move or you, you get up and you start to run or something like that, then you could tear the hamstring. Um, that's really common for baseball players and things like that, that sit on the bench and then get up and sprint. Uh, or worse, um, if you would have to be in a car for a long time and then run to the restroom, for instance, um, that would be, a possible reason to have damage to a hamstring because it's been hanging out in a short position for so long and then you start to take it into active uh, contraction. So avoid that one. So we're going to go after your hamstrings today by repositioning all of your load joints over each other and then finally at the end we'll actually um, go through some lengthening of the hamstring. So Start with your feet pointed straight ahead. Feel your feet on the floor. Take a full deep breath. And 
Notice where the weight is. Close your eyes and just notice where the weight is on your feet. More toward your toes, more toward your heels, more on the inner or the outer foot. Notice how that is for you. And then with your feet pointed straight ahead, fold your hands into the golfer's grip, bring your hands to your temples, thumbs pointed straight down, relax your stomach. So just this position, we use this often as a functional test where we look at hands behind head and that temporarily repositions your upper back over your middle back over your pelvis. But we're gonna use this elbow curl here to do this right now. So bring your elbows all the way together so they touch, and then all the way back, all the way together, all the way back. Keep going. Ten more. and then release. Bring your hands into the golfer's grip once again. Fingers curled, but palms open, and really tighten up your knuckles. Feet still pointed straight ahead. Maybe check if you move them. Then pinch your shoulder blades together. Once again, relax your belly. Bring your arms so that they're parallel to the floor. Squeeze your shoulder blades together a lot. So we, we're after scapular retraction, the shoulder blade muscles squeezing towards each other so that that changes your upper back into your middle back, into your pelvis, into all the way down to your legs. Keep those shoulder blades squeezed, circle forward, 40 circles. Now we could use this to reposition the upper back over the middle back over the pelvis. Maybe we would use arm circles to reposition a leg bone. If somebody had, um, a hip that they weren't very load on, for instance, because maybe a knee pointed in and a foot pointed out. We're always thinking about the whole body as a unit. And when we do something like this, check your shoulders. Are you still squeezing your shoulder blades and have you started to contract your belly again? Let your belly go. Let your pelvis change position over your leg bones and release. Good. Go the other way. Bring them up. Squeeze and circle backwards. Soften your belly. Keep trying to squeeze your shoulder blades all the way together. Elbows super strong and straight. Pull your fingers into your palms even more. Keep relaxing your belly. and release. Excellent. Go ahead and do a forward fold and just check your hamstrings today. Uh, as you do that, go ahead and lift your kneecaps up so that you're pulling the muscles around your knee up your thighs as you bend over. And hang. Just check where that is. and then come on up. I should have had you do that first thing. Sorry about that. And then come down onto your hands and knees and go into a static extension position. So from your hands and knees, let your hips be just slightly ahead of your knees, knees behind your hips and your hands right under your shoulders. And then let your belly hang toward the floor and let your shoulder blades squeeze onto your back. Now, it's very common the shoulder blades want to squeeze up by your ears, but let them go into your middle back. We're trying to change the position of any rounding that might have occurred in your upper back. We're trying to move that into some extension, lumbar extension, 
and then go ahead and drop your head, chin down, head dropped, and just breathe. We're gonna hold this for a minute. We're gonna let the curves come back into your body. Now, the only way to be a little cautious of this is if you know that this much extension in your back is too much, then you might pull that up just a little bit, but keep letting your shoulders go down. So those of you with a little bit of arthritis, in your back or some stenosis where the extension occurs uh, at one place, a spondy, people who have a spondy, they might be a little bit cautious of how far to drop into that extension. But everybody else, you won't hurt yourself. Just let your belly hang toward the floor. Keep letting your head drop and let your arms be like strong pillars, pushing your shoulder up into the back of that shoulder joint, letting your shoulder blades move toward your back, squeezing toward your spine. About 10 more seconds. Excellent. Now, come out of that. Just check one more time. Do that forward fold, so tighten up your thighs and bend over and see if that made it easier, just that exercise. If we changed the position of the joints to lengthen the back of the hamstring, or the hamstring just goes over more easily. We also should have reduced a little rotation in your body. If you have a little bit of a twist, or maybe you know you have one hip that's higher than the other, that would be an indication of a pelvic rotation. All of those things begin to come out with the exercises that we've just done. So I'm gonna actually have you repeat those one more time. So come back to standing. Go back to your elbow curls. Hands at your temples, feet hip width apart and pointed straight ahead. Relax your stomach. Elbows all the way together so they touch. All the way back. We're changing your upper back. As your elbows go back, squeeze your shoulder blades a lot. See if both shoulder blades, see if you can get in touch with what's happening on your back. So my body has this uh, right shoulder that I do a lot of things with. My rotation is this way. My right shoulder blade is much more difficult to get to squeeze onto my back. So see if that's true for you. If you have one shoulder blade that you can take a deep breath and let it come off your back. And then as it comes onto your back, Get that shoulder blade to squeeze toward your spine. Get full scapula retraction. Notice if you just clenched your belly, relax your belly, and then bring your elbows all the way together again. All the way back. All the way together. All the way back. Together and back. And then right into arm circles, hold your fingers into your palms, arms by your sides, squeeze your shoulders again, scapular retraction, soften your belly. Notice if your abs just engaged, squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back, arms out to the sides, circle forward, 40 circles. Keep squeezing. Does one want to give up? Make sure their shoulder blades are, or your arms are parallel to the floor. If they start to get low, pull them back up, pinch them together, and release them down. That should be a little fatigued. Palms up, squeeze, as long as there's no pain, and then soften your belly. 
Let your abdominals go. That You'll notice that your pelvis may just change position. It may tip forward and change over your leg bones as you do that. Keep squeezing your shoulder blades together, arm, arm super straight, finger pulled in, circle backwards, 40 circles. And release. Come down onto your hands and knees once again. Go back into that static extension position. Knees slightly behind your hips. Letting your belly hang toward the floor. Squeezing your shoulder blades onto your back. Tuck your chin and drop your head. Big breaths. Let your rib cage expand. Let your shoulder blades, the bottom edge of your shoulder blade, come toward your spine. Hold it and breathe. Strong arms. Maybe your spine needs a little adjustment. Keep tucking your chin, dropping your head. Now, all we've done is address rounding in your upper back, repositioning your pelvis over your leg bones, and repositioning your spine. Go ahead and come up. Check that forward fold one more time. Just notice, how is that forward fold? Is that getting easier and easier as the hip joint is repositioned with the pelvis? And I see thumbs up, or did that change for anybody? Like, whoa, my bend is much better. Awesome. Cool. Now, come back onto your hands and knees. Let's reposition that hip joint a little bit more. So come into a kneeling groin stretch, bringing your foot forward. And as you draw your body forward, I want your front ankle to stay in front of that knee. So make sure that it's far enough out. There are reasons to have it be back, but we're going to keep it out for right now. So as you go forward, that knee stays slightly behind that ankle. Hands right on your knee. And even here, I want you to squeeze your shoulder blades just a little bit. Let your back hip just go as far as you're able. Relax your stomach. And notice if your shoulders wanted to hike themselves up around your ears. That would be a very common thing. So see if you can just relax them down away from you. Keep holding that shoulder blades down your back, opening up that hip. Again, changing the joint position. Now we're in a split hip position. Changing this joint position from what the leg bone is doing into the pelvis, how the pelvis is reacting to your upper back. My shoulders just hiked up to my ears again. Notice if that happened to you, let them relax down your back. Maybe you get a little bit farther. And then switch. Second side, coming forward, square, Square your hips to start, then letting that back leg go behind you, bringing this front knee forward. And then did your shoulders hike up, relax your belly, relax your shoulders down your back. Let that back hip joint open while this front one moves forward, holding in that kneeling groin stretch.
Good. First side again. Now we're going to add toe raises and toe presses just to access the muscles on the bottom of the foot and the whole back side of the leg. So come into that kneel and groin again. Shoulders relaxing down your back, belly relaxed. This time, make sure your foot's pointed straight ahead. Lift your toes off the floor, not the ball of your foot, ball of your foot stays, and then press your toes down into the floor. Lift, press. So that entire kinetic chain from your foot through your leg is working. Let's do 15 of those or so. And just press them straight down. Maybe you notice that your split is getting easier as that joint repositions itself in the socket. And switch again. Taking it forward. And then use your toes. Lift, press. Lift. Lift, press, lift, press. Shoulders relaxed, belly relaxed. Is that back hip opening up a little bit more? And release. Cats and dogs, both hands on the floor. Round and arch your back all the way up, all the way down. Let your shoulder blades come together on your back. Lift your head. Go into that neck extension. And once again, notice if your shoulders are just up around your ears. And let your shoulders move into your middle back to the bottom edge of your shoulder blades is coming together down low in your back. We're trying to move your middle back. Round it all the way up and down. And up and down and up and down. Last one. Excellent. Let's keep changing your middle back today. So grab a chair or your block or something. So middle back is often a stubborn place for a lot of us, especially those of us that sit rounded in a chair or drive for a long time. That rounded position, it just tends to get stuck. It makes it hard for the shoulder blades to be able to come together on your back. So we're going to use this to open that up today. So take your hands and just bring them like this over the seat of your chair. And then go ahead and move back. Let your hips and belly and head hang toward the floor as you pull your body down through that. Letting that move through your back. Take three deep breaths. And then switch your arms and come on down. Switch which one was on the top. Pull down a little more. And 
in. Come on. Excellent. Come down onto your side for an upper spinal floor twist. Stack your knees and your hips. And then go ahead and keep the knees and hips really stacked. Don't let that upper knee slide at all as you open up that upper arm, allowing your spine to twist, bringing that down to the side. Big full breaths. You could bring this hand to that top knee just to make sure that it's really staying there. This is as much about pelvic stability as it is about letting your whole spine twist and change. So with that stable pelvis, the spine has the freedom to rotate. That rotation is necessary for golf or tennis, lots of other sports also, and just function, reaching back behind you in the car. Fully in breath, big full exhale out. Two more like that, fully in. Expanding the ribs laterally, exhale. One more time, fully in and exhale. Untwist, roll to the other side. Stack your hips and knees. And then keeping your knees and hips totally stacked, open up your upper arm and upper back. Allowing your spine to rotate. Big full breaths, fully in, expanding through your whole rib cage. Exhale, squeeze it out. Use your abdominal muscles to act like a bit of a ratchet. Fully in, fully out. Fully in, fully out. Fully in, fully out. Fully in, fully out. Excellent. On to your back. Now that we've repositioned your upper back so that your shoulders are away from your ears, your middle back has extended. We've twisted you. We've opened up the hamstrings by repositioning the pelvis over the leg bones. Now let's go ahead and find your abdominals and use them a little bit. So arms down by your side, shoulders gently underneath you. Feel the curve in your neck and your low back. And then bring opposite arm, opposite leg up. Feel the thumb and the pinky on the floor above you. And then switch at the top. Switch at the top. Switch at the top. You'll feel your abdominals have to brace just to hold you there, but your legs and arms get to do their full range of motion. Staying in neutral, the floor is holding your shoulders and pelvis in neutral. Keep going. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then release. Pelvic tilts, 
Go ahead and tip your pelvis backward and forward, moving from flexion to extension, allowing your spine to go through that range all the way up between the shoulder blades. And I said the last thing about hamstrings was sometimes they just don't get lengthened enough. So that means, yes, regular stretching or just doing things that take them through a full range of motion. So these next few moves, we're going to take them through a full range of motion. Starting here, shoulder blades on your back in as good of a position you can get with your shoulders. So the shoulder blades should lie flat on your rib cage. Your collarbone should be just slightly upward angled. So tuck them underneath you and then pull your knees into your chest. As you do that, your spine is going to round a little bit. Then take your heels and push them way up to the sky and then bend your knees and bring them to the floor. All the way in, bringing your knees as far into flexion as possible. Then press your heels up to the sky, lengthen your hamstrings, tighten your thighs, tighten the muscles around the front of your knee. This is also, it's an open kinetic chain exercise, but we're working on hip, knee, and ankle also. Bring it all the way down. We've got 10 of these total. Keep going. Seven more. In, up, down, release. In, down, release. Tighten those muscles around your thigh, pull your toes back. Three more. Roll onto your hands and knees and come all the way up using your chair or your block once again. Coming into a assisted runner stretch, putting your heel directly in front of your knee, tucking your toes under and standing up, pressing both legs straight. So this one, I said, the hamstring sometimes just doesn't get to lengthen. So now I want you to roll your pelvis forward like you're trying to dump water out of your belly button so that the hamstring has to lengthen. I want it to be in the belly of the muscle, not up around the attachment. So be a little gentle, but if you pay attention to your body and you feel like a stretch, not a strain, you should be able to push that knee all the way straight and reposition the pelvis over that leg bone and hold it. If you're pretty flexible, you could take that all the way down to the floor and continue to let that go, taking your pelvis over your leg bone a little bit more. Breathe and hold. As we reposition the leg bone, go ahead and switch sides, we're actually triggering your nervous system to have a different relationship to those muscles. So come into this side, put that leg straight, move your pelvis over your leg bone. So let's say you have a little bit of a tucked under posture. The nervous system says, I can't let those hamstrings go because that's what's holding me up in space. 
So it's not till we reposition the pelvis that the body has like, oh, I can use the hamstrings now for what they're supposed to do, which is bend the leg, because I'm not just having to use them as a stabilizing force to hold me from falling over from gravity. So stay on that side. If your hands are on your chair, great. If you can take it a little lower, awesome. Continue to reposition your pelvis over your leg bone. come on up. Now standing there, let's use these hamstrings. Hold the wall if you need to or the back of a chair if you want to. Take your leg behind you, find your balance on that other leg, and then curl this leg all the way up. Try to touch your heel to your butt and then bring it back down. Relax your shoulders, relax your belly, curl that leg up, and down. Curl, release. 10 times working the balance of that other leg. That's having to stabilize you in space. Point your toes a lot, hold it up there. Find the balance on that standing leg. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release, second side. Pick it up, 10 curls. Hold it up there. 10 second hold. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Excellent. Go ahead and try that forward fold one more time. Hopefully it feels easy now or much easier than when you started. Is that true? Give me a thumbs up if that's true. Awesome. Okay, let's reduce any extra rotation that might exist in your body. For the last few minutes so if you have a wall come to the wall if you don't um, just do these in space feet pointed straight ahead arms out to the side exhale over inhale lift exhale over inhale lift we use the wall because the wall helps you reposition your head over your shoulders over your pelvis over your knees over your ankles that repositioning of the low joints helps that front to back balance or the right to left balance in your body be more symmetrical. So keep going here, over and up and over and up. And if you notice that it's difficult for your head to wanna be at the wall if you're at the wall, that is a good indication that your body has an imbalance somewhere along that chain and those of us that are spending so much time on the computer these days. That's pretty common. The weight of our head is so much like 12 pounds that any little deviation from being right over your shoulders causes the muscles 
to hold and balance in one way or the other. And that really affects the entire chain all the way down. So notice where it is, arms out to the side, exhale over, inhale, lift, exhale over, inhale, lift. Wider one more time, way out there. We use this also to reposition the hip in the hip joint. When we abduct the hip this far, it changes how the head of the femur sits in the pelvis. And that change allows for a twist to come out or a hip elevation to come out. So we're doing a lot all the way. We're always thinking of the body as a unit over and up over and up. I'm giving the nervous system new information about what muscles it needs to hold tension in to keep you standing vertical. Come right back in. Last ones. And then turn around, see if I can get a little more of the wall. If you have a wall, great. If you don't, again, you can do this in space. But turn around and pigeon toe your feet. Toes together, heels out, and then take your arms straight up the wall. Go into the golfer's grip, so fold your fingers and then roll your upper arm bone outward. Let your shoulders relax down your back and hold that position. So if you're just in space, you can do it like this also. Pigeon toe your feet, arms up, shoulders relaxing down and rotate your arms out. Relax your stomach, let your stomach go. Once again, we're repositioning the upper back and the middle back and the pelvis. And because you're pigeon toeing your feet, your pelvis is gonna tip a little forward, repositioning that hip joint. Bring the weight to the inside of your feet, really let that go. Bring your arms out into a Y shape. Bring the weight to the inside of your feet. Breathe. And straight up from your shoulders. into that T-shape, keep rolling your upper arm bones back, shoulders changing position of upper back into mid back, into pelvis, into leg bones. And release it down. Let's go into a free squat. So hands just out in front of you, little bit of a squeeze between your shoulder blades, keep an arch in your back, have a seat. Get low. This will help with your tense game. You can hit those lower shots, get low, squeeze your shoulders, that scapular retraction again, hug your shoulders onto your back, bend down a little bit more. And both shoulder blades squeeze toward your spine in this position. 
Get lower, get lower. And come all the way up. Excellent. Standing arm circles. Uh, let's go standing shoulder rolls one last time. Up and back and around. Once again, letting the shoulder blades change the upper back. And forward. And backwards again. Good. Check that forward fold one more time. Hopefully that moves easily. The tension in your hamstrings has shifted. And then go ahead and get into whatever position you're most comfortable in for meditation. Uh, onto your back, legs up over your block in static back or legs out straight in Shavasana. As you come to your mat, see how quickly you can turn to your breath and just drop everything. This meditation is not about uh, not letting the thoughts arise, but to notice where the thoughts are coming from, who's thinking them, and how they arise in consciousness. So tune into your own breathing. Notice your body as energy. Quickly scan your body and Release any tension that you might still be holding. And then as quickly as you can drop any of the thinking that you have for later in the day or for what's happened before and just show up right here. And when you notice a thought arise, because it's likely that it will, see if you can investigate the thought. Where is the thought coming from? How did it arise in consciousness? Can you go into that thought and witness it. Look for who's thinking the thought. Look for the looker that can investigate the thought. And 
Now, if you move from thinking in your head space to coming from a more heart-centered place, notice what changes. As you open that channel between your head and your heart, you can continue down all the energy centers of your body. Just create that open channel and allow the loving light of consciousness to just flood your body. And flood all of your cells. And you can grow that loving light exponentially by knowing that we're doing this together. We're supporting each other to feel good in our bodies. To have this momentary space in our mind this discipline of mindfulness. This momentary space that you find is what allows for you to have a thought or an energy that might be harmful to yourself or to someone else and to witness it before you react to it. And as we get better and better at that, we have more healing in our bodies, more loving connection to each other, less reactivity. Gently add some movement back to your body or stay there and turn off your computer. You could also unmute yourself if you'd like to say something to any of us. You can let me know how the new wall color is or anything like that, how I can improve it still. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, those panels are great. Are those new screens? The screens were in my office. Oh. Um, 
and I just, you know, I'm, as I do more filming in my house, I just am needing, I, my friend who is a videographer came over and um, I said that we can see the door and we can sometimes see the little kitchenette that's over here. And I don't always have control of that. And she said, well, the way that the way that, the works, that it'll go like that. So if you just add some screens, then it will change that. I was so grateful. She said, we can even add a plant to bring some green into here. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But as I, 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 um, my computer and I are becoming better friends. And I'm using my mindfulness practice to not hate it. <laughs> so, um, learning that the pandemic is actually going to have me learn YouTube, I think, and, um, and Instagram and some things like that. So I, I am hoping to just do little snippets after class of, you know, two exercises or one exercise or something like the first three exercises that we did that I can um, keep helping people live in less pain. Mm -hmm. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. It looks great. It's looks great. Thank you. I really look forward yeah, and appreciate the class in the morning. And, and I like the idea that I have to, all I have to do is roll out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm right here. I don't have to be five minutes late. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful that all of you keep showing up. So. Thank you, and, um, and, and thank you for your we can show up when we're not in town. That's a cool thing. And you can show up when you're not in town, and you can do them on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I will be uh, have a better practice of labeling it. So this will be a hamstring class, and um, yeah. then I'll post it to Pain Free Studio YouTube channel, and you can tell your friends and send it out and share it and all that kind of stuff. If you uh, great, like. great. This it was looks a great like class. Still, it was really looks good. like you're still recording even, Kyra. Okay, well, I'll turn it off. Thanks. <laughs>